We're back for the WBG, and this game could essentially bring us to a completely even record. Today we're taking on Tiro, and despite Tiro being 0-5 right now, he is easily the scariest draft in the entire league. With threats like Rashifu Rapid and Prillaboom, this is basically like we're fighting a slightly worse version of a Regulation F team. And if you guys enjoy and want to see more content like this, like and subscribe for more. And before we get into the matchup, we should address the three new Pokemon on our team, which will start at the matchup screen, obviously. But we do now have replacing Kilobajal, Mistrevis, and Grookey, an Articuno, Galar, a Rotom, and a Stonejourner. I feel like Stonejourner was a better gimmick mon than Grookey, unfortunately, allowing us to passively boost the damage of our incoming offensive threats. Meanwhile, Rotom is still a nice Electroweb option that we could use, and it gives us a Choice Scarf file of Pokemon, and Galar Articuno being able to set Trick Room and Tailwind viably felt like a more viable mind game into most matchups than Kilowattra was, and it also cost me less points and it's a lot less reliant on flying moves. I feel like this would overall be useful as in a lot of games I was regretting not having a Psychic type, which isn't a sentence I really thought I would be saying in VGC, but with my particular team it just felt important. So I'm going to be trying this out. I think it will make a positive difference and we'll see if it works today as I think already one of our Pokemon is going to have an incredible matchup. Looking at Tiro's team, Tiro's team definitely does fear my Trick Room route and I think a Trick Room will actually be a very viable endgame into Tiro's team, but not for the reasons you guys are thinking. Starting off though, I do need to find a way to beat the top five very comfortably offensively and I think I've found a Pokemon that can do it as I'm expecting the top five to come and one of Pursuing Quillfish, Raikou, or Alcremie. Alcremie could lean into Zero building a really good offensive set, with Raikou and Quillfish being really good damage reducers, and I think that any of those three will be used with the other five. But I did need to bring Iron Bundle first with a Booster Energy Special Attack set. With Freeze Dry and Hydro Pump, we hit pretty much everything viable on Tidoro's team, unless if he's going for some really random defensive Terra, but even still, it's such a unique coverage set that it's really hard to resist this without just natural typing. And thankfully, this is great in a Pokemon like Rillaboom and Urshifu, as well as a really good method to actually deal damage to the Archaludon, especially if it's not going to go for a defensive Terra that would get around Freeze Dry, because then I don't need to rely on Hydro Pump spamming. With Encore as well, I can lock in Pokemon like Talon Flame into Tailwind, especially if I do have a speed advantage, or more importantly, Pokemon into moves like Protect, as Tiro's team is really slow. And without Tailwind up and without Scarfers, I can confidently outpace everything, at least for speed creeps that I'm thinking. And just to make sure that I am creeping relevant speed tiers, this is creeping all the way up to anything that would be creeping my Ogre Pond Hearth Flame, as without Kilowattro, I can actually go a lot slower on Bundle to make the creep on my second fastest Pokemon, making sure that I can get a really good speed check for Pokemon like Adamant versus Jolly Talonflame. And overall, it's with Terra Ghost will avoid Fake Out, proving to be a very nice Pokemon here. We have Ogre Pond Hearth Flame, which is going to lean into a Focus Energy set, allowing us to crit through things like Archaludon if it's Stamina, and with Grassy Glide, we can take advantage of my opponent's Grassy Terrain to still pick off threats like Urshifu without needing to speed creep it. I did decide to creep Adam and Urshifu though, as it is a nice creep at least allowing us to outpace Adam and Urshifu Aqua Jet, and making sure that we can just revenge it off really confidently. And with just dual stabs and focus energy, we will break through pretty much everything on this team, besides a defensive Terra Fire on Archaludon. Which, while I do think it is likely to come, I have two Pokemon coming up that will very much pressure that, as well as my Hydro Pump Iron Bundle, so I'm not very concerned with it, thankfully. Up next, though, we do have a Terra Dragon Cliff Fable, with Follow Me Alluring Voice helping hit a Meteor Beam. With our 116 special attack, we hit a nice special attack bump, and Terra Dragon should help a lot with incoming attacks such as Woodhammer Rillaboom and Surgic Strike Sir Shifu. My opponent's Dragon types will never really click a Dragon type attack into a Fairy because they always have much better attacks to click, and if I can scout it correctly, I can make Clefable into a very obnoxious Pokemon, or when it's done dealing necessary offensive work, I can just let it go down with Follow Me. The Helping Hand investment as well should be great to boost Pokemon like Ogre Pond, Bundle, and many other threats damage out on this team, and with our defensive investment, we'll take hits as well as possible from Pokemon like Urshifu even if we do end up fighting Adam and Terra Water sets. Up next to really seal the deal, we have a Garchomp with Terra Dragon to help gain a resistance instead of neutrality to Pokemon like Urshifu and Rillaboom, and with Sword Sand stopping Tantrum, Outrage, and Protect, this is a very offensive nightmare for my opponent. With Rough Skin, we'll be able to get great damage on the Urshifu, and overall, with our defensive investment, we guarantee take any hit from Urshifu, even if it's Adamant Terra Water, allowing us to take anything besides, I guess, like an Ice Spinner on Urshifu, which I'm fine if it's going to click. Tiro could technically go for an option like Protective Pads or Punching Glove, but Protective Pads means that he's getting significantly less damage, and with the Punching Glove, while he will deal a little bit more damage while avoiding the contact, he cannot get around Protect, which is very nice. And I figured just in case though, is if he is trying to avoid the rough skin, I would go Citrus Berry, as this does ensure that Tiro has to at least take four different hits, meaning that I can always fire off an Outrage guaranteed, 
and I think that's a little bit higher of a net result than maybe going for a rough skin here with Rocky Helmet, despite the quicker damage on Tiro. And overall, Tiro doesn't have a, a great check to Garchomp, as all of his Pokemon besides Alcremi are neutral to Outrage, meaning that either Tiro is bringing Alcremi, Terra Fairy, or dying to Outrage here. Up next, just to ensure that I can get some really good field positioning, I'm going to be bringing Focus Ash and Focus Manchow, which is going to be great for Intimidators like Quillfish in case he brings Quillfish, and with Fake Out, Close Combat, Ice Spinner, and Rock Tomb, I can clear through Tiro's terrain, I can Fake Out Tiro's opposing Fake Out user, I can Close Combat most of this team besides, I guess, the Talonflame and Gothitelle, and for Talonflame in particular, I have Rock Tomb, as well as just having this as a great speed control measure, allowing threats like Garchomp to deal even more damage even more quickly. And overall, this should be a very annoying Pokemon for Tiro's team, as he does not have a lot for offensive fighting type with really good coverage. Especially considering Manchow has always been brought as a coaching support pick with moves like Wide Guard and Helping Hand, I think that this will really catch Tiro off guard, especially if he's been heavily scouting my games, and this will overall be a very annoying Pokemon for him. Finally, we're going to debut our new Pokemon, Kuromaya the Articuno Geller. With Terra Dragon, I get around threats like Urshifu Rapid and Rillaboom, especially if Rillaboom's going for knockoff potentially, this will help a lot. And with Trick Room Freezing Glare helping hand in prison, this will be a great support piece. I'm leaning into the Fizz Dev here as none of Tiro's special threats scare me outside of, I guess, random special Raikou sets that have calm calmed mind, but otherwise this should be a very hard Pokemon for Tiro to break. And with the Helping Hand, we'll be able to boost our Clefable, assuring us a really strong way into a game two, because I don't think that Tiro will be expecting Trick Room from this team. And this is where I think the Trick Room aspect will help a lot against Tiro. If you guys want to try the team out yourselves, the Reynolds is going to be on screen here, as well as with the paste in the description below. And let's get into our matches against Tiro today. All right, for our first game of the day, we're taking, well, I guess uh, for game one, in terms of my lead here, uh, I'm kind of thinking that we go with, so Tiro's team is pretty interesting. Uh, for Noteworthy Terra's, the Water Fu, is water. Uh, Raikou's ice. That probably means it's Terra Blast. I can't imagine another reason you'd go with ice. So it's probably offensive for Garchomp, which is good to know. I'm going to guess it's probably an AV spread with like Terra Blast, Snarl, Thunderbolt, and then like filler. Uh, Talonflame's ghost, probably just to get around fake out, um, just for Gale Wings mostly. So that's, that's good to know. I think that my lead here is probably going to be, I haven't really thought about lead in honesty. Like I feel like, so, so I feel like the lead bundle is really fucking good here. Um, my bundle in general should deal a ton of damage to Tiro, and we are proto special attack. Well, a cork drive special attack, I should say, which should all be very important. Um, I'm gonna go with. I feel like that leading off with probably kind of like the idea of going with like. Hmm, I'm kind of thinking fire upon bundle for game one. Actually, not bundle. We're gonna backline bundle. I think just keeping the threat of it. We're gonna go with um. We're gonna go with Clef Gardic. No, I kind of like Gardicuno in the pack. We'll go with Mian Shao. I'm gonna go with Bundle, and then I'm gonna go with Garchomp. I think it's a good game one. I want to save Clefable and Gardakuno as like a nice game two three sort of thing, uh, because I do think that that as like a Trick Room out could do really well against my opponent, and I want to try and get myself in a situation where I can completely eviscerate Tiro through Trick Room. So good luck of fun to Tiro, of course. Uh, it should be a pretty interesting battle. Tiro is a very scary set of six. I know he's 0-5, but like Tiro's team is fucking incredible. I was talking about it preseason, and I think he has the best draft. I think it's just an adaptation to doubles, which is fair. I mean, it takes a while. It, it's a pretty uh, like Tiro is a very strong singles player, very prolific in the in the scene. Um, so I mean, it's an adjustment. It's definitely an adjustment, especially when you're so ingrained in playing one v one. It took me a while to do that as well. So. Uh, anyway, uh, Tiro's gonna lead off with Talonflame and Raikou. Very interesting lead, but it, it does kind of put me in a little bit of a, of a corner. Just because the Raikou could, in theory, still go for something like a Terra, Terra Ice. Well, probably not a Terra Ice against this in particular. I don't think Tiro Terra is either of his mods right now, frankly. Uh, but what I could probably do is I could go for a Ivy Cudgel Terra Fire, just to get rid of my weakness to the Talonflame here. And I'll go for it right into the Raikou. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to go for a Rock Tomb into Talonflame, since even if it does go for like a Terra Ghost, I'm kind of fine just to punish it. I don't really care if Tiro is going to go for like a Brave Bird turn one, or if Tiro is going to go for really any attack from Talonflame turn one. The scariest thing would, it, it'd probably honestly be like, I mean, Tailwind would kind of be something, but it, I'm not too scared of it personally. I think I can outdo Tailwind. I would more be inclined to be scared of something like a Will-O-Wisp into Mian Shao, because it is a really good offensive piece here. Though with how I've played it every week, if Tiro like has keeping up, I mean, we've been going coaching every fucking week. So I don't think that that's Tiro's plan. Yeah, okay, perfect. So Brave Bird does get chewed, thankfully. And my Fire Pond should be able to get a really good hit. Uh, no, Tiro's going to go for Aura Sphere. Thankfully, we still take that. I'm going to be honest, I was a little bit concerned there. But thankfully, we take out the Talonflame. And we're going to probably also take out the Raikou very confidently, too. Uh, that was a crit. I'm not sure if it mattered. If Tiro teared, obviously, I mean, a crit wouldn't have killed. But in this case, I mean, I feel like Talonflame just kind of died anyway. I mean, it's a Miancho still has a good amount of attack, and we are invested. 
Um, but yeah, Raikou also does drop here. That's perfect. Uh, okay, let me take down the note of the lead, though, because the Aura Sphere especially does lead me to believe this is an Assault Vest set, because I don't know why else you'd go with that. Unless the TR was really concerned with coverage. Um, okay. So this is good to note. Um, Tiro has technically not revealed ability either, which is, it's kind of weird to think that, but Tiro hasn't revealed ability, actually. Uh, okay. So, Tiro has Urshifu and, Urshifu and Archiludon here. I think my play is to go for an Ivy Cudgel, just right an Archiludon, just for damage. And then I think I go for the, I could swap out here. Uh, most likely if Tiro is going to attack the Mian Chao, it's going to be with the Surging Strike just to try and break a Focus Sash. I doubt that Tiro tries and actively predicts the bundle coming in. Um, I could also go into Garchomp. Garchomp would confidently take a hit at this point too. And I think specifically since I didn't go with the Rock Slide here, it's a little bit more useless against what Tiro brought. So I'll actually go into that. I think bundle can safely come in on a following turn. And if Tiro doesn't click Surging Strike, well, if uh, Tiro clicks Surging Strikes, I can very easily go into bundle here without any concern, even if it is like a Scarf set. So, Tiro is going to Terra. Uh, this is most likely the Arch of Ludon, if I had to guess. I feel like that, that's more so like a defensive Terra right here. No, it's Urshifu. So that's very good to know, actually, because I can now very cleanly pressure into the Arch of Ludon spot without any real worry. So, game one Terra goes to Urshifu. That's good to know. Game one Terra back. Okay, and this is the Tour Scarf set. So, we can just go right in Iron Bundle, yeah. So, this, this all works out really well. Um, so, what's Archiludon going to go for? Because that could be a little concerning, I guess. Um, they're going to go for Breaking Swipe. Okay, Breaking Swipe is a good play, actually. That That's a very good play, actually, yeah. Okay, so I just go right into my, right into my bundle. Right in a bundle, yeah. Um, and I can freeze dry into that Urshifu, which can't do anything about it. Um... They we're going to reveal Booster Special Attack, but I'm not too concerned with that. I mean, Bundle's going to deal a lot of damage, and Urshifu can't counter it. Um, it can go for Surging Strike, sure, but I'm kind of okay with that. I think my... I think that my... Um, I could also Breaking Swipe into the Archer loot on here. I don't really want to fuck around with Urshifu, I'm going to be honest. Um, it is a little bit terrifying of a mod. So I think I'll go for Outrage in case I do manage to take the hit before I get my attack dropped in into Infinity. Um, or I should say Negative Infinity, technically. Uh, and, and yeah, I'd rather just kill the Urshifu because that is kind of a threat to my uh, to my Mian Chao especially. And I cannot let that Mon take a, really just take any time in the field. I was considering going for Breaking Swipe to lock Arch Ludon into a bad move here. But I'm not too concerned. I mean, it's not boosted up yet. Uh, Bundle is still fairly offensive too. And even if I have to go to like an Arch Ludon v Mian Chao 1v1, they can't Terra. And CC should be a very free click there. So my opponent's going to go for Surging Strikes into the Garchomp here. Uh, we actually, it looks like we'll take that, uh, which is amazing. Because with the Citrus Berry, we're going to activate that. And this is a great instance where uh, if Tiro, let's say, was Protective Pads, this is a big reason why uh, things like Protective Pads or Punching Glove, I wanted to make sure that we weren't going to give up the potential for Rocky Helmet, which while it would have done more damage to our Shifu, at the same time, I needed it to survive. And Garchomp surviving here, it's going to be a big difference. Because even at minus one, that Outrage is going to hurt like a motherfucker into Archer Ludon. And if they attack Bundle, then I have Mian Shao and Arch uh, Garchomp on the field, which will easily be able to eviscerate that. So I'm very okay with this. This is actually a really good turn for us. Uh, the Citrus Berry came in clutch. Uh, that's that's good to note, actually, because that's doing very little damage, even with Terra Water. Tiro probably has some sort of Rain Dance, if I had to guess. I feel like Talonflame, I'm pretty sure it gets Rain Dance. I remember considering that very highly on one team when I brought, like, an Urshifu and Talonflame route in a draft game. So I'm pretty sure that Mon does get uh, Rain Dance here, uh, which I'm very fine with. Um, I can actually just, no, I can't Terra Ghost, right? Because I Terra the, I mean, it's fine. I don't reveal Terra on a relevant Pokemon, which is great. Or at least the need to click Terra on a relevant Pokemon. So, uh, Archiludon does die. That's, that's very good. And we've gotten some really important information early on. So I'm okay with that. So t did not, oh, I wrote Galings over Brave Bird on my notes for the move section. So it just wasn't highlighted. That's, that's good to know. Um, yeah, because we don't actually know. I, I meant to, so when I wrote that down, actually, it was funny. Because I was going to say, well, technically, we don't know if it's Gale Wings. But I must have I must have wrote down Gale Wings as the move, which is really silly of me. Uh, good game one to T-Row. Uh, I'm still really scared, despite how clean that game one was for us. Because we've revealed four Mons already, which isn't great. Uh, t -Row does still have really good ways of potentially pressuring us on lead. Um, if t -Row does go for a Talonflame Raikou lead... I could actually really easily punish the whole team that Tiro brought with Clefable, Articuno, Gatler. That's actually a very smooth lead to go with into Tiro's team. 
and there's not a lot that TR could do about it, actually. Uh, the counterplay would be like, I don't actually know what the counterplay would be. It'd probably just be going really aggressive with Urshifu, which is fine because I can still muscle that. Um, so we're gonna, I think I might lead off with like, um, probably, so I feel like that going with Ogre Pawning Gordakuno would be my best bet here, though I'd have to burn a tower on it and I don't know if I want to. I think I could maybe get some mileage out of Mianxiao, actually. Mianxiao could do some really good work, and we saw that Count KO Talonflame immediately, which is great. Um, that, that would, the benefit there would be to preserve Meteor Beam boost. Well, actually, no, if anything, I should find something that will KO the... I should find something that will pressure the Raikou. So, that would probably be, that would probably be Garchomp, yeah. It, actually, no, it would be, it would be Ogre Pond, and I don't need to, no, I should, if I go with Ogre Pond, I kind of have to tear it. Um... Okay, yeah, it is It is going to be Garchomp, actually, I think. Um, Garchomp, Articuno, Galar is my lead here. Well, actually, hold on. So, so Tiro, so Tiro did lose to the Mianxiao and Mianxiao and Ogrepan lead. Which, if Tiro is trying to beat that, I think that it is just an aggressive Talonflame or Shifu lead. So, Garchomp, actually, yeah. Garchomp, final answer. Garchomp is a great lead with Articuno, Galar. And we're going to go with, um, we're going to go with Clefable. And I think my final Mon will probably be the Iron Bundle. Because Booster Bundle can be a nice late game option after I lose my Trick Room. If Tiro is going to go with the Urshifu Talonflame lead like I am anticipating, this actually works out really well because I get a very free attack with my Terra on Articuno plus my Garchomp attacking with probably Stomping Tantrum or Outrage. Most likely Outrage, actually. Tiro doesn't have a Fairy-type here, or a Fairy-type Terra for that matter. Not even like a Terra Steel Mon, in fact, so the whole team is neutral. So we'll take that. Uh, Gothitelle Urshifu. Now, this is an interesting lead. Uh, Gothitelle could, in theory, actually potentially stop our Trip Room from going up, and so I do need to be very careful with that Pokemon. Um, in terms of my options, I have to tear the Articuno Galar just to make sure I can take the hit. So we're going to go for an Outrage here. Just a raw Outrage here. And I'm going to go for Terra Dragon. And I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for Imprison, actually. So my play is Imprison turn one. This locks out a few things. For one, Helping Hand Gothitelle. But it also locks out the potential for t to go for a Trick Room to reset my Trick Room. And those are both very important plays. t will most likely fake out here. Into what Mon, I'm not too sure. Um, but thankfully, we've accounted for this situation because my Articuno Galar actually has Covert Cloak just for this line. So I'm pretty okay with this. Uh, Tiro will most likely go for Fake Out. It will probably be into the... I feel like Fake Out into the Garchomp is a good play for Tiro. Because he should try and preserve health on this. He's going to Terra. That will definitely be the Urshifu. There's no reason to Terra Gothitelle against this team at all. Yep, okay. Urshifu is going to Terra. Perfect. That's probably leaning in to kill my Articuno Galar, which is very fine because we're going to start chewing hits from that very easily. Um, this is kind of a situation though where I do wish I got the zero IV and speed. And I'll have to mention that in my builder that I couldn't actually go for the zero speed IV here. Um, I couldn't find an Articuno that I had that had zero IV. I do have a friend though who's going to reach out and, and will get me hooked up for future weeks. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah, this, this one's max speed, which isn't great for Trick Room, but it's not terrible. It, it was mostly for the Goth. Perfect. So we revealed Helping Hand. So this Imprison play already is a much more safe option for us because we can now lock our Shifu out of Helping Hand boosts for future turns. And this is great because it's already doing very little damage to my Articuno Galar anyway. And this is going to mean that it will also survive yet another turn because it already wasn't even doing half. And these are crits too, so it's not like it can just crit and do more damage. No, no, no. It can't do more damage. And Outrage will go off here, completely dealing a ton of damage to that Urshifu. It looks like it actually is going to just barely not kill, which I'm fine with. We've locked out Helping Hand, though. We've also locked out Revenging Trick Room. I'm going to just go for, not even in prison, we're going to go for a Trick Room here. Trick Room will gain us back the field advantage, and Tiro shouldn't really be able to stop this, actually. Outrage will go off very unimpeded at this point. Now, the only thing that Tiro could confidently do with that Gothitelle would actually be going for, like, a Protect here. Because Protect is a move that I had to forego. Because I felt like Helping Hand was a lot more valuable on Gothitelle to stop. And Trick Room as well. And I needed an offensive move. If anything, I should have went with Psychic. Um, Psychic or like some other, other Psychic move that Gothitelle could have potentially ran. But Freezing Glare was just such a good opportunity. I mean, 20% chance to freeze is pretty fucking great. Tiro is going to withdraw the Urshifu here. Which is actually really good for me. Um, and he's going to go into Bracken. This should be really boom. I don't think that... Oh, no, it is Arch of the Mouse. I don't think we've seen that nickname. Okay, Tiro's gonna go for Protect. So, so Tiro does have Protect. That's good. That's good to note. So we've seen Helping Hand and Protect. And meanwhile, the Gothitelle is gonna take this hit, which is perfectly fine. It's all perfectly fine. I'm almost curious if that means that Gothitelle isn't is like a competitive move set instead. Um, no, oh, sure, certainly not. Because I mean, Tiro Switch. I'm almost curious if I'm just forgetting Shadow Tag mechanics. Because I feel like again, there's no other reason that that would be a play, right? 
Um, either way, though, I mean, T-Row doesn't really have a switch into Topping Tantrum. I can just go for Tantrum, and then I can go for Helping Hand here. And then that should be some really good damage. And it also means that I can just get a super effective attack off rather than a neutral one. It does slightly better damage rolls to the Archer Ludon here. Uh, which, Gar uh, Garchomp's gonna have to take a foul play, which, thankfully, I mean, that's contact as well. And thankfully as well, um, I'm not gonna take a lot from either Pokemon from either of these attacks. And despite the breaking swipe at minus one, we'll still deal some serious damage to Arch. And it has to take the rough skin as well here, which is great. And it procs with Citrus. So this is all looking like really good. And Tiro is now gonna deal even less damage with foul play, which I don't know if he realizes, but it, it's good for me either way. Um, yeah, so this already does about half, which is huge. Uh, Tiro does reveal Citrus Berry. That's very important. I'm assuming that Tiro was probably doing this to bluff an Assault Vest, uh, which, I mean, could have actually worked really well because I didn't look in a calcs for this, but we'll take it. And then meanwhile, Gothitelle's leftovers. So this is all actually very good information for us. Um, I'm gonna probably just go, I'm just gonna go into Clefable. I mean, Tiro is gonna go for Breaking Swipe. It is his best click here in every scenario. So I'm gonna go into Clefable. Oh, right, okay, so I, I forgot. So Gothitelle is Shadow Attack. We, we've realized that really quickly in case it, it wasn't obvious. Um, I'm just gonna go for an Outrage here. I'm gonna go for Outrage, and I'm gonna go for a Helping Hand here again into the Garchomp. Uh, Gothitelle has proven that it is fairly useless against my team, so I can kind of just let that on exist. I'll go for Outrage, and whatever it hits, it hits. Gothitelle will go for another Foul Play here. That's fine. Again, deals less damage, and Gothitelle still takes passive damage from it. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to take yet another Breaking Swipe. Again, both Pokemon survived this, so I'm okay with that. And then meanwhile, on the next turn, my opponent is going to have to have taken an Outrage, which it will be fairly able to take, to be fair. I mean, that Arch Ludon's confidently healthy. Um, but all of these things are kind of fine. All of these things are actually very fun, because Clefable will enjoy the Zen game very much so. And we should only have like one turn of Trick Room left, right? We have one turn of... No, two turns of Trick Room. Okay, well, that's fine. We'll have one turn when it comes in, which is all I really need because Bundle will be able to deal some serious damage and Urshifu can't confidently lock a move against it anyway. Um, So we're going to go for a Helping Hand here into the Garchomp spot. There's no real reason to click like Freezing Glare at this point. My my opportunity should always be to boost Garchomp in case they make a not great play. Um, They're going to go for Foul Play yet again. Okay, that's fine. So, yep, this is all okay for me. Um, and then meanwhile, the Archer Ludon is going to have to take a Clefable attack, which is really good for me, actually, um, because it's not going to really enjoy doing that. Breaking Swipe will go off here. That's going to kill my Gardakuno. Um, all of this is perfectly fine. I just realized as well, because we're Covert Cloak and Gardakuno, I couldn't actually proc competitive, which is a little bit unfortunate, actually. Uh, so that's kind of unfortunate, because I could have made this into a very terrifying sweeper, actually. Um, so that's that's a missed opportunity. I'll have to consider that for future weeks if I'm going with Covert Cloak Guard. Um, this is still not a huge deal, though, because I can actually go right into Bundle and Clefable. Bundle gets a very free Protect here. Meanwhile, I can go for a, an Alluring Voice with my Clefable. Yeah, Clefable Alluring Voice actually does a lot. I could also Meteor Beam, but I don't know how much I like that play. And frankly, again, just the Alluring Voice into the Arch of Ludon would probably be better. So we'll go for the Alluring Voice here. Um, that should be really strong overall. And then I can just start firing off really good Bundle hits which will at least get me some good mileage. They're gonna go for Helping Hand. Okay, Helping Hand is fine. Uh, Gothitelle is gonna probably go for the Helping Hand and they're gonna probably, if I had to guess, they're probably gonna Flash Hit on my Clefable, which is okay, because um, Clefable will attack first, thankfully, and perfect, Archer Lunon is dead. Okay, so Archer Lunon is gone. That was a huge threat to my end game. Uh, I will say there is one Pokemon in particular that could make this kind of scary and go into a game three, and that's Rillaboom. Uh, Rillaboom specifically could be a really good way to revenge through my team. The Raikou is kind of scary, especially since that is probably the Assault Vest Pokemon. Um, but there's not a lot I could do around it, unfortunately. I can Encore... I mean, I can't really even take the Encore in anything. Uh, they're probably going to go into whatever their not or Shifu Pokemon is right now, though, if I had to guess. Which is whatever. I mean, I could still Muscle Pass Scott to tell pretty easily. Um, they're going to go into Coilhead. That is Urshifu, right? That is the Urshifu. Okay. So Urshifu is really terrifying here, actually. Um... My play is always to go for, um, let's see. So my play is to go for follow me and to hope that I can call the turn right because I need to call exactly what Urshifu is going to lock here. Um, and if it's, so if it's certain strikes, then this is a bad play, but if it's close combat, then this is a great play and it wins me the game. So I need to just make that call. And I do think that Tiro will genuinely value taking out the bundle because bundle is such a great win con against his team. Um, so I'm gonna kind of hope that I made this call right. This this really does come down to it like a true 
Close combat, okay, perfect. So this right here is gonna be the thing that in my opinion wins us the game. Um, because depending on Tiro's last mod, Tiro can't beat my bundle anymore. If Tiro is like a Raikou, this is kind of a safe play for Tiro regardless, but I do need to get a little bit shysty here. Uh, not really a great line that I have that I can confidently say I can back on, but there are options. There are definitively options here. Uh, it really just depends on the goth, like on the goth tail partner, because if it is like a really boom, I think it can potentially follow me, grassy glide, and then go for the, okay, they're going to go into baboon hawk. Um, that is the talent flame. All right. So my play is to go for a meteor beam at this point. Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, let me double check damage really quickly. So, I might unironically just want to dual attack the Talonflame. So, Talonflame... Actually, yeah, never mind. My play is always to dual attack the Talonflame. Just in case of things like miss, in case of misprediction. Like, I, I only actually lose the match by not dual attacking Talonflame. Um, they're gonna go for Helping Hand, plus most likely Brave Bird if I had to guess. Because Brave Bird is a very low drawback attack, and it's also just priority. They're gonna Brave Bird the Bundle. That doesn't actually kill, which is very interesting. Um, that's extremely interesting, in fact. Hydro Pump will pop here. And this is going to seal the game because of the Meteor Beam now getting us the plus one boost. Gothitelle can't actually sufficiently break my team. And I can go for, I can probably just cheese and go for like an Encore here. Lock Gothitelle out of anything valuable and then go for a Luring Voice and win. That's probably my safest line in all honesty, which is great. Um, It's really nice that these two mons are the ones that are popping off because I haven't actually gotten a Clefable thumbnail yet. And it's a really it's a nice thumbnail to have. I mean, Clefable's a cool mon. Perfect. Okay. The, the Meteor Beam tech is going to definitely save us the match, though, in Encore here, because that, that shuts down Gothitelle. It objectively cannot win the game anymore, because we've now locked it into Helping Hand, which it has no partner to boost. So this is like a very sealed game, too, at this point. Which isn't to say that, you know, it was a very free win or anything, because frankly, we did almost lose this at multiple turns. I actually would have guaranteed losses if I called the Archivy turn wrong. So this would have went to a game three if I didn't call that right. And I am uh, definitely glad that I did because Tiro's backline being Talonflame actually was not only surprising, but it was very, very difficult to play around. Because if that was if that was really boom, I could have potentially muscled it. Uh, actually, really boom would have also been bad. Really boom might have been worse. Really, all three of those in the backline would have been worse. The fact that Tiro went into Urshifu sooner though was the thing that made that terrifying because I couldn't actually reset field like I wanted to because of Gothitelle, and preserving that backline was always a detriment. Regardless, though, Clefable managed to do it. I'm glad I let Clefable get the kill. Um, just, just that bad, frankly, because Clefable's kills are very down the drain right now. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoyed, and if you want to see more draft league content like this, stay tuned for next week where we're taking on Keegan. Keegan's a very fun battler. I went to Toronto with Keegan, and he's enjoyed learning VGC, and it's been fun to get to experience VGC with him. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe for more. Shout out to our channel members, who for just a couple dollars a month, you get some nice bonus content. Our current channel members are Zeke, Mio, Rasakura, Obo, and Laskadids, Josh JK Ultra Player, and Incog M. Thank you guys so much for your support. It really means a lot, and I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. Until then, peace out, guys.